I just received a new test task. Test the upgraded version of the RX 480E module. The RX 480E 868 module. What exactly has been upgraded? 1. Extended working frequency band to 868 MHz. 2. Compatible with wide voltage, from 5V, 24V can be used as power supply. 3. Adopts FSK modulation, has better anti-interference. 4. Has a longer remote control distance. 5. Integrates the transmission and reception modes, and the transmission mode can get the feedback signal of the reception mode. Now I will start testing. Whether the module is in good condition, how to build a minimum experimental circuit, and apply it to actual scenarios. Through these, Determine whether this module is a true positive upgrade of the RX 480E. The factory sent me four modules. I recommend buying four for the first order. Two modules form a set. Spares prevent project delays and enable A-B testing. Whether the factory sends me the module or I buy it online. Don't connect to equipment immediately. Always check whether the module is in good condition first. To avoid damage to our equipment. The factory says that this module can be 5 volts, 24 volts. I first use a DC power supply to provide a 5 volts voltage for testing. Take out a breadboard. The two areas in the middle of the breadboard are connected vertically. The power supplies on both sides are connected horizontally. Insert the module into the middle area of the panel board. Note that there should be a space in front and behind. It is convenient for us to connect. We connect the black wire to GND. Connect the white wire to V+, that is, the positive pole. The other end is connected to the power area of the breadboard. Finally, Lead out the positive and negative terminals of the breadboard to connect to the DC power supply. Turn on the power. The module has two LED lights. One red light and one blue light. The blue indicator light flashes twice, indicating that it is currently in the transmitting mode. According to the instructions, in the transmitting mode, click the module's learning button. The blue indicator light flashes twice. The test passed. The module integrates the transmitting and receiving modes, and you can switch by clicking the learning button five times. After the red indicator light flashes five times, switch to the receiving mode. In the receiving mode, click the module's learning button, the red indicator light flashes and then stays on. Enter the pairing state. This is how to test the quality of the module in the receiving mode. The current power supply voltage is 5V. Let me test different voltages to see if it is wide voltage, 12 volts. Twelve volts test passed. Twenty four volts. The function is normal, the current is normal, and the chip is not hot. Twenty four volts test passed. This module is indeed wide voltage. Voltage range 5 volts, 24 volts. Next, I will quickly test the other three modules. The whole process is powered by 24 volts. Transmit mode. Click the learning button. The blue indicator light flashes twice. No problem. Receive mode. Click the learning button. The red indicator light flashes and then stays on. No problem. Receive mode. Click the learning button. The red indicator light stays on. No problem. The four modules sent by the factory. All modules have no problem after testing. Choose one of the groups to build a minimum transceiver experimental circuit. This is a module in transmitting mode. I will first build a minimum transmitting circuit. This circuit is like a remote control. 
The principle of all remote controls is similar to this one. It's just different in appearance, such as the battery button and a suitable shell. After connecting the power supply, we need buttons to transmit. Take out four small buttons. Note that the vertical bar on the back of the button indicates that the two feet are connected together. If you insert it into the breadboard and press it, it has no effect. You can just adjust the direction. The buttons here must be rebound type buttons. For example, this one. Release the ones that need to rebound. Then connect each channel of the module to one section of the button. The other end of the button is connected to GND. Like this. When we press the button, the corresponding channel will be connected to GND. Give that channel a low level. When the module receives a low level indication, it will transmit an RF signal containing the information of that channel. The transmitter is usually mobile. I don't plan to connect it to a DC power supply, but use a 12 volts lithium battery for power supply. This feels closer and closer to a remote control. Next, I will build the simplest receiving circuit. The steps are the same. First, connect the power supply. The receiving circuit needs to have an output indicator. I use four LED lights as indicators. The longer LED pin is the positive pole. The shorter pin is the negative pole. Because the module is the same as RX480E, both are high-level outputs. So the positive pin of the LED is connected to the output pin of RX480E868. The negative pin of the LED is connected to GND. After connecting, start testing the reset method of this module is the same as that of the rx 480 e module click eight times to reset and clear the code now we press the transmitter module the receiver module does not respond at all next let's experiment with three modes first momentary mode first click the learning button of the receiver module then the indicator light is always on. Then press any external button of the transmitter module. At this time, you can see, the red indicator light of the receiving module flashes. It means that it is paired with the transmitter module. The blue indicator light of the transmitter module flashes. It means that the pairing success signal of the receiving module is received. After pairing, you press any external button of the transmitter module. The corresponding channel of the receiver module outputs a high level. The indicator light of that channel is on. Release. The corresponding channel of the receiver module stops outputting a high level. The indicator light of that channel goes out. Did you notice? When we press the external button of the transmitter, the red indicator light of the module lights up. The blue indicator light also flashes twice. The factory said. The blue indicator light flashes only when receiving the feedback signal from the receiver. We can test it. Disconnect the power of the receiver. Press the external button of the transmitter again. Only the red indicator light. The blue indicator light does not flash. It means that signal is transmitted, but it didn't receive the feedback signal from the receiving module. Suppose you are 100 meters away from your control device. You can't see the controlled device. Now you can see by seeing whether the blue indicator light of the transmitter flashes. We just paired the momentary mode. Now we need to test the toggle mode. Because we are using the same transmitter module. So we need to reset the receiving module. Press the learning button of the receiving module 8 times to reset and clear the code. The transmitter module cannot control the receiver module. Now pair again. Click the learning button of the receiving module twice. Enter the pairing state. The red indicator light is always on. Press any external button of the transmitter module once again. The blue indicator light of the module flashes. Indicates that the pairing with the receiving module is successful. 
Toggle mode is flipped. Press the external button of the transmitter. The channel corresponding to the receiving module flips the output state. The next mode is latching mode. The same transmitter module. Need to clear the code. Click the learning button of the receiving module three times. Enter the pairing state. Press any external button of the transmitter module once again. Latching mode is to open only one channel. Press the external button of the transmitter module. The channel corresponding to the receiving module outputs a high level. The other channels are closed. The three modes of the module have been tested. Next, I will make an alarm. Let's see if the module can complete this task. For the transmitter module, we only keep the power supply part. Use a lithium battery to power it and carry it with you. Then connect a long rebound button. One end of the button is connected to GND. The other end is connected to the D3 channel of the transmitter module. Press this button when there is danger. The alarm will sound. This is the remote control part of the alarm. The receiving module also only retains the power supply part. Let's connect an alarm. If the current driving this alarm is too small, the sound will not be loud enough. So we need to add a transistor. Amplify the current. The pins of the transistor are as shown in the figure. I will also put the specification sheet of the transistor in the video introduction. Take it if you need it. Insert the transistor into the breadboard. This is the circuit diagram. We connect the circuit according to the circuit diagram. After wiring is completed. When we press the external button on the transmitter, the D3 channel on the receiver outputs a high level, makes the transistor conduction. The alarm forms a loop and starts working. Finally, I also want to test the anti-interference performance mentioned by factory. When using RX480E, plug it into the decoder of RX480E. The decoder provides power supply and indicator light. It is convenient for us to observe. Take out two remote controllers. Write remote control pairing momentary mode. When pressing the A key, an indicator light is on. At this time, the other remote controller acts as an interference source. Press and hold the button of the left remote controller. Simulate a signal that is constantly transmitted next to it. The right remote controller cannot control RX480E. Only when the interference source stops transmitting signals. The right remote controller can continue to control RX480E. This is the interference problem of RX480E or 433 MHz frequency band. Now the factory says that RX480E868 is optimized for this problem. Then we need to test it carefully. The decoder is also compatible with RX480E868. Press the button to directly transmit the signal. This module with the decoder simulates the interference source. Let's see. Can the alarm system still work properly? Press the alarm button. It can work normally. It will not be affected by the interference source. Pass the interference test. Finally, let's summarize. After my test, the module has indeed been greatly upgraded. If you are an old user of RX480E, you can replace the module to achieve direct upgrade. The factory will also launch the remote control of RX480E868 in the future. Please look forward to it.